Hello everyone, welcome to Scorcher Toys at AnyMoon.com's review of Yamato's GNU Dao uh, Macross Plus toys, the YF-19, YF-21, and VF-11B. I apologize as always if I'm mispronouncing this line of toys. These toys were released in June 2008. They MSRP'd for about 3,100 yen each. Uh, about a year later, almost exactly, Yamato released upgrade parts, which included fast packs for each of these toys, and some minor enhancements to the YF-19 and YF-21. So we'll just take one at a time here and I'll show you what you get. Uh, these toys obviously went up head to head with the Reveltech line of toys, Kyoto's Reveltechs. Reveltechs are cheaper, smaller, made out of poorer materials, um, but a little bit better articulation and they come with more fun stuff. So everybody had a choice to make. Uh, as I mentioned, the, these Yamato toys are made of better materials. Uh, they're all ABS plastic. You can actually disassemble them, uh, which helps if you are going to be making customs. Um, the legs can spread further apart if you've installed the upgrade parts as I have on this YF-19 toy. If you haven't, uh, there's not a gap in between there, so the best you can get is something like that. So obviously the upgrade parts helped a lot there. The other place the upgrade parts helped is with a little up down in the chest. There's a bigger notch on the inside that allows that up down. So that's the articulation increase you got from the upgrade parts as well as super parts, which I'll show you in a moment. But let's get into the regular articulation here. Obviously good shoulder mobility, rotates everywhere. It's on a ball joint there and then on ball joint there as well. There's actually some articulation in this little flap here. So you have another pivot point right there. It's all very good. The elbow has uh, what you would expect, the 90 degrees, but you can also kind of pivot it then and bring it up even past 90 degrees, which is nice. Uh, and there's a swivel point at the top of the shoulder. Uh, the fists attach with ball points, ball points, ball joints. And so you can rotate, do whatever you want there. Um, there is a waist joint. I pointed out the hip articulation already, but uh, also goes all the way forward and back. And then there is the nice knee joint. It uh, only gets you about 90 degrees though. Uh, and you can't really go any forward with it. There's also no twist at the knee. So really the knee is probably a big weakness here. Uh, the feet have a double ball joint system so a lot of lot you can do there as far as angling things but you'll find with the uh, limits on the knees uh, you don't need to use that as much as you probably should. Uh, the wings also on the hips are on ball joints. Uh, the head also a ball joint and you can move the head laser. So that's the YF-19. It does have super parts um, I'll have plenty of pictures on it, but the super parts just peg in on the sides of the legs and to the shoulders. Uh, not very exciting. So let's move on to the YF-21. As I mentioned before, YF-21 also had some enhancements with the upgrade parts. Those enhancements being a uh, hinge that allows the backpack to move. And then there's also a waist joint now. That's not there without the upgrade parts. Uh, beyond that, the toy did have some pretty solid articulation to begin with. It normally doesn't pop off unless you're manhandling it. Um, there is head articulation, but it's a little difficult. There you go. Oh, the upgrade parts also completed this yellow stripe around the chest intake. Um, shoulders, oops, again, ball joint, again, one of the strengths of these toys is also one of the weaknesses. Easy to disassemble, disassemble the toy for customization. Uh, elbow is the same as on the YF-19 toy. You have your normal 90 degree and then another second joint that helps you get a little further. I showed you the waist joint already. Hips just like the YF-19. And now you can get the backpack out of your way to go further back with the hip. Again, uh, you can get a lot further than 90 degrees on the knee here but still no twist at the knee, so a weakness there. And again, strong feet articulation. So 
good stuff there. This toy didn't come with a second gun, so that I found to be a bit of a bummer. Um, and none of these toys came with display stands uh, or the super parts, which obviously had to buy, be bought separately. Uh, the super parts with this toy also came with a collapsed gun that fit on the wing, which I thought was a nice touch. So you could have, if you weren't having it hold any gun, you could put both stowed on the legs, or you could pop a gun off here and show that that's the gun that's being held by the toy. So, good stuff there. The VF-11B didn't have any competition from Kyoto. Um, and didn't have upgrade parts that changed the articulation. And as you can see, it comes with a ginormous gun. Uh, a little awkwardly so. Um, head, so everything's pretty much the same. Ball jointed head. Uh, shoulder articulation is pretty good. Although I would have liked to have seen a pivot behind this shoulder plate so you didn't have to move the shoulder plate with the shoulder. Uh, stuff like that can happen. Um, all right. Uh, same elbows with the double elbow system. Shield is on a ball joint. You can do whatever you want with that. Uh, hips that far of an angle outward. Knees get you beyond 90 degrees, which is nice. But again, no twist. Just the twist at the very top of the hip. So a little bit of a bummer there. And feet are pretty good, although on this toy, the uh, sides of the leg come down pretty far, which limit the feet just a little bit. But you can definitely have fun with this toy and the posing. Sorry, I didn't put that shoulder back together there. Okay, so I will have on anymoon.com lots of pictures of the fast packs on. Don't worry about that. I will also have comparisons to other toys so you get a better feel for the size. But again, here is the Kyoto toys next to them. Um, at the time, at 3,100 yen, I thought they were overpriced. Um, you can find them nowadays, warming shelves at bargain basement prices, so you can get them a lot cheaper. Uh, the upgrade parts are very nice to have. Should have been included in the first place. Kind of dumbfounding how Yamato went about this. Uh, they charge an extra two thousand dollars, uh, two thousand dollars, two thousand yen, for the upgrade parts, which brought the total to five thousand yen, uh, pretty quickly, which is just ridiculous for what you get. It's not at all appropriate. So, you know, the upgraded toys, if they came with a display stand, uh, maybe thirty-five hundred yen would have seemed reasonable to me. But as it was, Kyoto just seemed like a much, uh, much better bang for your buck purchase. And if you can get past the stylized look of the Revel Techs, um, I, I would recommend those over the Yamatos. If you're a customizer, it's no question the Yamato is a lot better for you. Um, if you're a stickler for line art, the Yamatos are a better choice. Um, uh, at the end of the day, if you get the Yamatos really cheap, still, still a good toy. Um, but yeah, you should definitely look to get them really cheap. Obviously, I shouldn't have to say it, but None of these things transform. There's no metal here. These are just Batroid only toys that are meant for posing and fun posing. All right, visit anymoon.com. I'll have all that stuff I alluded to earlier. Thanks for viewing.